We also gonna make the t-shirt version too. So this is the hoodie. I'm gonna show you guys the design process and exactly how I'm gonna press it up. So let's get straight to it. All right, right before we get into the design portion, make sure you check out OnlyNinjas.com. This is the only sponsor for this video is myself, OnlyNinjas.com. Every single dollar spent there is one entry into the giveaway of either winning, actually not either winning, winning both a heat press and a vinyl cutter. So make sure you check it out. Also, you're gonna be able to purchase this exact hoodie if you want to support the channel, support, you know, everything that I do here pretty much comes from there. So make sure you check it out, onlyninjas.com. Make sure you follow the Instagram too, onlyninjasbrand, at onlyninjasbrand. All right, let's get straight into the video. All right, so in order to make a t-shirt design or a hoodie design in this case, first thing we need is the graphic. And I made this in a very simple way. It looks a little intricate, but it's a lot easier than you think. So first thing I did was I purchased this font from Creative Market. As you can see, this is actually a very popular font right now. There are some free options out there. I don't know the free options, honestly, but this is the one that I've been using. It's called Glamour Absolute. And it's pretty awesome. It has the different types of ligatures. So that always helps elevate your font because that way not every single letter looks the same. As you can see in uh, the letter E on strongest right here, you can select a different kind of uh, letter E. So there's more than one choice of like select letters. All right, the next thing I did was open up Illustrator and I made my file size as a 12.75 by 19 because that's the size of the transfer that I'm going to order. And typically you want t-shirt designs or hoodie designs to be about 12 inches wide. All I did was click on the letter T and I'm gonna type in mentality matters. And now I'm gonna pull up my properties window over here. All right, so this right here, the properties window is gonna tell you exactly how and then it's Pantone solid uncoated or solid coated. You can always ask your screen printer. All right, and then all of these are pretty much Pantones. Um, if you're using like a custom Pantone color, uh, most screen printers may charge you for like a custom Pantone. So um, it's always ideal to like call ahead of time and see what kind of Pantones or colors they keep in stock. Uh, and usually they keep solid colors like if you just say pink they carry just a pink if you say red they carry a red so um, you can also think about it in that fashion all right so we changed that so we changed that to pink 
All right, so next thing we're gonna do is change this butterfly slash brain to um, it was like a yellow or a gold. So it might not be color accurate to the one that we actually got printed because this is my second time creating it. But anyways, we pretty much did that right there. We moved this, we're gonna zoom, zoomed out. We're gonna move this about right here. And then we had the text over it like that. And then what we also did was take some of these butterflies and created additional butterflies. All right, so now I copied that one and I just pretty much pasted it. And I had a large one around right here that I ended up using for the puff. So anything that's in black is really going to be the white puff print. And then also going to copy and paste that once more. And right here I typed in health over wealth. And then we're going to make that a little smaller. It's probably about four inches wide. We also changed some of the ligatures on here. And then we also spaced it out a little bit. You know, something like that. All right, so we got something like that going on. And then we also put a few more butterflies up here. Can't remember which ones we selected. But let's go with maybe this one. And then I believe we also have about maybe two more. So we're going to copy this one over here. Something like that. And this one over here. So we had something similar to that. And then there was one other thing that we did was create a blue and pink outline for the actual text. So what I'm going to do is hit copy. I'm going to paste it again. And now I'm going to place it about right here. I'm going to remove the color. I'm going to put a stroke on it. It was about maybe two pixels. We're going to change the stroke color to whatever other colors we use. So we have pink right here. We're also going to send this to the back. We're going to hit right click, arrange, and send to back. All right. Maybe it was about three pixels. Not too sure. So I need to make another one. I'm just going to make this invisible real quick. So I can select on this one. Copy and paste another one. And move it on up. And then we're going to make this one Scion. Now we're going to make this come back. Oh, we also need to send this to the back. There we go. So we pretty much did it just like that, except for we made the black white. That's pretty much it. Simple, right? Um, also, we did make it a little bit smaller. That way we could have the back portion of the hoodie for the transfer. And then we copied this top portion. And put it down here as well. That way we could get the front portion and then this whole entire larger piece is the back portion. All right, so what I did was I removed all of the black parts because I was gonna do that part myself with the white puff. And I ordered this right here as a three color transfer. So I went on over to 613 Originals. I know a lot of people say uh, plastic saw transfers typically crack. So I found out a nice little secret from one of my homies who doesn't want to be announced on who he was, but he helped me out with this one. He uses the stretch transfers. It's a little more pricey, but uh, they also have it's 35 cent over here. He uses the stretch transfers, even though it says it's for spandex and stretch fabrics. It doesn't say it's for cotton. He uses that on a cotton t-shirt and that's what I ordered. So I did the three color, the larger size, so you can do a gang sheet. And I believe I ordered around 72 for $4.83 each, which it sounds kind of pricey, but it, I'm doing a three color and I'm doing one very large. So check it out. One color for this size. And this is a gang sheet. It gets to around like $1.88 for around that quantity. So after I got that, I spent around $4.83 each and then a little bit of shipping. I think it was like 15, 20 bucks. And then I went on over to Econo Transfer and I ordered their largest white puff. So 27 yards to feet is 81 feet. So I used about a foot's worth of vinyl, the puff vinyl for the actual hoodie. And that's the front and the back. So what I'm going to do is take 240 and divide it by, what was it? 81, 240 divided by 81. 
cost me around three bucks. So three bucks plus about five bucks, eight bucks print cost front and back. And we're talking about like pretty much a four color print. All right, so four color print around eight bucks. And then you got the cost of your hoodie, depending on what you use, can range between like eight to 12 bucks. And also on size, it really depends on what you use. I'm just gonna go ahead and say like 12 bucks. So we're talking about 20 bucks for a front and back four color print hoodie. Not too bad. Some of you all know ways to get it done cheaper. Of course, we can go screen print it around. We can do, there's a variety of different things that we can do. But anyways, um, we're gonna get into that at the end of this video. Right now, we're gonna hop into making this hoodie. Let's go. All right, so now that we did the design part, all we have now is our transfers. This is from 613 Originals. Also, I found out the key to not cracking is actually ordering the, the stretch ones. So, you know, in the section where it says stretch and it doesn't say it's for cotton, it says it's for like nylon and all that stuff, I still use it for cotton. I don't know if it's, this is recommended or anything like that, but I use it for cotton. Stretched it, doesn't crack, and the wash is great. So, I think that's the secret to not cracking when it comes to these plastic saw transfers. But I mean, it doesn't say anything about using it for cotton. It's just what I've been using. All right, so I actually found that from one of my homies who doesn't want to be announced. But on top of that, we're gonna use puff. So this is how we're gonna make it look. You know, we're gonna take the quality of the actual t-shirt hoodie to a whole nother level. We're gonna use puff on top of the actual transfer. So we got our puff heat transfer vinyl. This is from Econo Transfer. So they, they always have the puff in stock and they always have other colors as well. So check this out. They also have these three colors. They have a whole lot of colors. This is all puff. So these puff up, which is awesome. We're not gonna use these colors in this video, but pretty dope. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab our hoodie. I'm using a Gildan G180. Reason being is because it's pretty cost effective. And one thing I noticed in a lot of other hoodies is where the drawstrings come out of and usually has the little silver circle around it, which I'm pretty sure it helps with the quality, but I'm not, I'm not too big of a fan of it. I don't use it sometimes though. So with this, we can take the tag off. It's a tearaway and it's a Gildan G180. Quality isn't like an independent hoodie or a, a Bella Canvas style hoodie, but it gets the job done. So we're gonna go ahead and take this to the hat press, even though as you can see right here, I have the actual neck label uh, platen, but it doesn't really work for hoodies. However, this Teflon right here and this, the way it's shaped, it works really good with hoodies on how you're able to just slide it in. But we're gonna take it to our hat press. All right, so we're at the hat press. These are also neck labels from, I can't remember if this was Transfer Express or 613, but I usually order it like this and then I cut it down. You have to order from a place that allows gang sheet and then you cut it down. So ends up being pretty cheap. We've done a video on that. So I'm gonna take my size medium. Also, if you're curious, these are actually just storage bins for like loose screws and bolts and nuts and stuff like that. So once we cut it down, this is how we usually store it. And then you can also take it, you can stack it if you want to, save space. So that's just an extra tip that helps you out. But I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I'm tearing away the, the original and take this one right here, throw it right on, push it down. Takes about a good 10 seconds. I usually do about eight or so. That way we're not scorching it or anything. And it doesn't have to be something that's extremely permanent since it's just on the inside. But it'll still last even like that. So there we have our necktie. Now we're gonna take this back to our heat press. All right, so I'm trying to find a way to position this where we can record. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not used to shooting in here yet. We're just used to working so far. Also, if you watch the vlog and stuff, obviously you see we have a new, more functional setup. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna weed it real quick. All right, so I have this weeded. As you can see, I wasted a lot of space, which I did intentionally. You don't have to do this. I just do it to make sure the placement is accurate on the back so I don't have to cut it up and match it up twice. So this is a lot of wasted space, keep that in mind. So I got this portion for the front and I got this portion for the back. 
All right, so I moved once again. Here we go. We're gonna take our hoodie. We're just gonna slide it right in. You see how the Teflon helps it glide right in there? And now, as you can see how this like little portion right here, which is typically for the, the neck tag, you can't do for hoodies because the garment's too thick, but it just helps out making it so, so much more even. And I'm just gonna pull it back slightly. I'm gonna take my transfer, cut this in half. Now we're gonna take this, I'm just gonna give it a quick look. Now I'm gonna flip it over. All right, now once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and press down. Take that off. I'm gonna take my puff. I'm gonna line it up right in the middle where it's supposed to be. All right, that looks good. Crank up the pressure just a little bit. All right, now we got our front portion done. It looks awesome. So check it out. We got our puff going. So there is one little issue is the fact that you can kind of see the puff. You can probably see it right there where it's a little more raised because of the transfer behind it. It's not too bad. It's only, you can only see it when you're very up close. But now I know the next time I order transfers and I want to like combine it with a puff on top of it, um, make sure to go ahead and clear out the space where the puff is supposed to go. So now, just throwing it to the back. All right, so one thing you wanna keep in mind is that whenever you flap your hood down, it's gonna cover up a portion of the design, so you don't wanna do it too high on the back. All right, so now I got the back. Just gonna give it a quick little look. All right, that looks good to me. Now we're gonna take the puff, and like I said, a lot of waste of space, but it's just so that I don't have to match up twice. So it saves me time. I think the amount of time I'm saving in comparison to the wasted cost makes up for it. All right, so let's press the back down. There you have it. What y'all think? Pretty dope, right? All right, so the only few things left to do is try it out in a few other colorways, see what I like, um, take photos of it, and that's pretty much it. So here's our hoodie. We got the front portion back and of course it has the puff it's pretty sweet so now I'm gonna take a few photos of myself take a few photos of the actual uh, garment and then post it up for sale that's pretty much it but don't close out this video yet because I'm gonna let you know why I chose to do transfers instead of getting it screen printed all right but before we do so Y'all always ask me what kind of camera equipment I use. So this right here is an A6300. The one I'm recording on is an A6400. These are cheap lens, quote unquote cheap. I mean, it's very affordable for what it is. So this is an 85 1.8. And then the one I'm recording with is a 16 millimeter 1.4 Sigma art lens. All right, so that one's really wide. This one's really up close. And then I have a monopod right here. And I'm just going to use my phone to connect to the camera to take the actual pictures. So I got to figure out how I'm going to do this real quick. And then I'll post the pictures up. Mm -hmm. 